everyone. Welcome to Eat Travel Rock TV Japan. We are here on the island of Toshijima, which is a historic fishing village right off the coast of Toba. This place was inhabited by pirates in the 16th century. We're going to check out this incredible traditional festival that is where they pray for an abundant fishing season. We're staying at this historic hotel eating sushi galore. And we're just gonna have a blast, so sayonara! Okay, so far this island of Toshijima is incredible. It's like Japanese history coming alive. Just these streets, the houses, everything is like stepping back in time hundreds of years. It's absolutely beautiful. The culture is just exuding from this place. Okay, so what these crazy young guys are doing is they're fighting. It's like a symbolic traditional fight to win this ink or this charcoal that's used to make the symbol, which means eight, which once again is the symbol of this entire festival. So it's like a coming of age, a coming of manhood type of uh, tug of war, if you will. Okay, so we're taking a little break from the festival right now, and since we're on a coastal town, it is very, very chilly, very windy, and so a better way to warm up than with a little shot here of hot sake, or several shots. So this is gonna be my little prelude to some noodles I'm about to eat, and then we're gonna go back out and enjoy the festival. Cheers. Okay, so we just went to the festival, and now everybody's partying. The party's starting in the streets. Of course, we got some sake, we've got some fresh sushi and octopus and fish, and people are just having a good time, so we're gonna drink it up. I've been on this remote island for almost a day now, and it is still very surreal to be able to experience a side of Japan most Japanese don't even get to see. I'm headed to a hut to speak with an Ama woman. They are famed Japanese fishermen freedivers. This tradition dates back actually to 800 AD and is still a very revered and respected profession, AKA these ladies are hardcore. Everyone, I'm fortunate enough to be here in the hut of the famed Ama women fishermen here on Toshijima and this is such an incredible place. We're right on the water. I'd love to ask you, how did you become an Ama woman fisherman? Amazing, so it usually runs in the family then, correct? So how old were you when you started? Now I know the main thing that you fish for is abalone, correct? Okay, and now is that exclusively what you fish for or do you you know, fish for other items too, because I know there's snails and some other types of fish too. Oh, uni. I like uni. What's the most difficult? Abalone. Yeah, so what is the season for abalone? When does the season begin? Okay, so it's pretty short. Thank you so much for talking with us. What a pleasure to speak with one of the famous AMA women divers. Okay, so we just walked into this little tiny hole in the wall neighborhood sushi spot. We walked into this incredible spread, all ready and waiting for us. And it's literally like every fish I've ever loved and or wanted to try on one plate. And we've got seaweed, we've got some shrimp tempura with like the biggest dollop of mayo I've ever seen, which we all know how much I love mayo, and I'm digging in. The best part of Japanese dining is all of the variety you get. 
everything is painstakingly prepared and immaculately presented. Okay, so I'm about to drink some fugu sake. So this is sake that has the fin of the fugu in it, which of course is a poisonous puffer blowfish. So you know I might die, guys. Here we go. It's like a, you know, fishy kind of sake. But it's delicious, it's delicious. The blowfish really adds a little je ne sais quoi, you know, a little something special. Okay, so we came to Toshijima today. We watched this miraculous festival that really symbolized the entire town. It was very spiritual, really, really cool. We've had about seven different meals in different restaurants, in different in people's different homes. And of course, we ended our day on this incredible sushi feast, which finished with some blowfish fugu sake, which, um, you know, I think it's going to extend my life and uh, not end it, hopefully. Konnichiwa, everyone, and good morning from Toshijima. We just woke up here in our hotel, which is a very, very traditional old-fashioned Japanese style of hotel and they just made us this incredibly gorgeous breakfast and he was trying to explain what all this lovely stuff is and I caught about half of it but what I do know is that these are little baby fish and these are going to be very interesting since I've never had whole fish that are literally the size of rice before so um, I'll give that a try. Oh, they're good. And this whole spread, we have some kind of like grilled whole fish here, um, different types of rice. We have a soft boiled egg and some interesting looking sauce. Some Japanese style tea, of course. I wonder if they make coffee, we'll have to find out. And just a very unique spread of different types of pickles and seaweed and this incredibly gorgeous pot of ebi miso, which has an entire crustacean of sorts stewing in it, which looks kind of like a little spiny lobster, although he said it was ebi, so, which is shrimp, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try it all. Time to feast. It's day two and I haven't even begun to scratch the surface yet, but today I'm headed to an oyster farm and processing plant right here on Toshijima. And these oysters are so insanely massive. I mean, look at this. Look at how huge these are. I mean, I almost want to eat it, but I just had a big lunch. I might hold off on eating this. This is enough for like three people, I think. But these are actually called Miyabi oysters. And this plant, exports over 5,000 oysters per day. And these Miyabi oysters, they only export 30 of them. They're very rare. They're like their own unique brand to this plant. It's like their own name brand of oyster, if you will, just from this location right here. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about these. Okay, so as I mentioned, I just had a really big lunch, but Justin here has not, he's gonna be my taste tester. And I want to find out what these Miyabi oysters taste like. That big mouthful. Uh, good luck, sir. <laughs> wow. Think it it's good? It's cold. It's very cold. As, very as you would hope. It's got a good salinity to it. Oh, okay. It's more of an East Coast or a West Coast? <laughs> I've had I think East we're Coast. very East. Very mm -hmm. East. I've had the East Coast oysters, but wow, this is like a steak. It's like a salty. That's a whole meal. It's a whole meal, wow. Okay, so now this oyster farm, they actually cultivate oysters here. And as you'll see on this shell, there will be hundreds of little oyster seeds, little, little baby oysters, if you will, which will take a long time to grow and mature. And then they become clusters of oysters on here. And when they get larger, they actually will break them apart and then harvest them and grow them even larger on their own or separately until they're big enough to eat. So we're going to actually get a little sneak peek as to how they do that. Okay, so this shell right here is like that shell I was just showing you where all those little oyster seeds were. 
And so from that, even though there's thousands on there, um, just a few oysters will actually end up growing from those seeds. And then if you just look at these clusters, actually mussels grow on these too, which they don't eat. But these oysters are huge and they will be removed. You can see back here, they're actually breaking them all apart and then they will be transferred to those big bins out there and then soaked in the water for two weeks to a month to really like pump up the flesh in there and get the salinity going. It's just a quick 10-15 minute ferry ride from Toshijima heading back to the city of Toba. But it's a world of difference in terms of you know, a big city versus small fishing town. So stick around.